This week, energy prices are soaring. The head of the World Bank says it's enough to trigger a global recession. People are out on the streets as cost of living continues to rise. Shortages of essential commodities have become everyday stories. The world is facing a global economic crisis never seen before in recent history. The dual effect of the COVID-19 pandemic and the Russian invasion of Ukraine has put the world on the edge. And like many countries around the world and Africa, Ghana is no exception. In fact, it triggers an even more deeper awareness of what we are going into. But yes, to an extent, I should say that you would have thought that these very strong Western economies would be more resilient. So for me, it points to a lesson that if they are resilient, it's even being hit. And they are falling to their knees in so many sectors of their economy, then we should expect what is going to happen. Here in Ghana, there is however one political party that has shown time and again that they can salvage the country and bring it back from the doldrums. The new patriotic party is the party in this country. Always stood for a liberal democracy, a total belief in the private sector, and a determination not to deal in poverty, but to aspire to prosperity. In 2001, the new patriotic party inherited a broken economy. Ghana was regarded as a highly indebted poor country by the International Monetary Fund. The Jay Kufour-led NPP government worked to bring the economy back on track. When we took over, the aim of President Kufour after winning the election and the aim of the party was to make sure that we lifted this country up. And whatever it took, one thing that I want to underscore is that our party will do whatever it takes in the interest of the nation. And that is why we went hippic. President Kufo decided to bite the bullet, as it were. How to get yourself out of that? He felt that was the important thing. And that was the joyful part. That was the admirable part of how the entire party, the entire government came together. In 2017, the new patriotic party again inherited a country that was on an IMF program. The task ahead was enormous. However, the government of Nana Adodankwe Ekufuado never wavered in their resolve to bring Ghanaians out of the program. The Kufu administration did it. The Akufuado administration from 2017 to 2019 had a clear track record of building this country up. This country was growing. It was expanding, we were creating more jobs, we were creating industries. The difficulties like inflation, interest rates were all coming down. And then we were hit boom in 2020 by COVID. Innovative programs such as the Planting for Food and Jobs, the One District, One Factory, and the Free Senior High School Policy, a program that has seen a record number of almost 2 million children benefit from free education, were all implemented even at a time when Ghana was under the IMF program. No matter the difficulty that the MPP is faced with, we're able to cure those difficulties and still provide the relief that Ghanaians want at the same time. And that's why, for example, even between 2017 and 2019, when we were under an IMF program, the Akufuado administration was still able to introduce those very innovative programs that brought relief to our people and growth to the economy. Free Senior High School, it was under an IMF program that we brought it. And today you've heard the funds saying that it is an innovative program that should be protected. Without question, it is the free SHS which allows, which makes sure that no child who can go is left behind because of money. That has been, for me, the most dramatic and innovative of our interventions. The fact that we are building 
and we are developing human capacity. It's so significant. But you see, the results of some of these very, very important investments which are not tangible, meaning that you can't feel its immediate results, it pays back after 15 years, after 20 years. But these are the systemic structures that we needed to build ourselves and to make ourselves resilient. Within the same period, thousands of graduates were employed. A healthcare revitalization program with drone deliveries and ambulances were introduced. In keeping with the Pledge of People Development, the President ensured that teacher trainee and nursing trainee allowances that had been cancelled by the NDC administration were restored. In addition, thousands of nurses who had completed school and had been home since 2014 were all posted. Soon, the government was able to bring Ghana out of the IMF program. I always say it is not the difficulty that you encounter or that you fall, but how you wake, rise, as they say, is the important thing. And we have done it before. We will do it again this time. We have a problem now, problem that has external circumstances, but what we do is always calculated for the benefit of the people of this nation. Having laid the foundation, the MPP government began a major industrialization drive and promoted a strong image to attract big companies into the country. The One District, One Factory policy was born out of the need to diversify the economy and create jobs for the Ghanaian people. Volkswagen, Nissan and Sinotrack are all vehicle brands that have cited assembly plants in Ghana, together with local manufacturer Kantanka. Hyundai and Kia, South Korean multinational automotive manufacturers, have also announced their plans to establish assembly plants in Ghana by the end of the year 2022. The president declared 2020 as the year of roads and several projects have been completed. For the first time in the country's history, four interchanges have been constructed simultaneously in Tema, Pokwasi, Obechebilamte and Tamale. The vision to restore and expand our railway network has also received a major boost. You know, after Nkoma, the only addition that was put in the rail sector was 15 kilometers. Today, this administration has added 100 kilometer rail. That is the Temapakadam and is extending towards Burkina Faso. We are talking about 22 kilometer of railway from Kujokum to Manso. And now this, they've also commissioned the Mansu Huli Valley one, meaning that the resting wheel will be complete. These are significant and tremendous improvements in our transportation sector. Today we have new airports in Tamale and in Kumasi. It's an international airport by all standards. It is said that tough leaders are made for tough times. The leadership Nana Adodankwa Ekufuado and the NPP has provided Ghana in tough times is unmatched. Taking Ghana out of the IMF in 2019 through his strong leadership drive at the peak of the COVID-19 pandemic is unparalleled. Whatever it is, we shall overcome. If you have a leader who is willing knows what is right and therefore is willing to take the very difficult decision then and you support him that means we will get out of it and once we get out of it i was going to say the sky is the limit but we know where we are going as the months and the years go by you will see the Ghanaian economy pick up again you see more expansion, you see more people getting opportunity to get jobs, to get incomes and to improve the quality of their lives. I've also seen the party, which is what gives birth to government, reorganized strongly right from the bottom coming up. From the polling stations to the electoral areas to the constituencies and the regions coming back up. And there's a lot of energy that is building gradually and I'm hopeful that by 2024, when the combination of the national efforts by the government and the party's reorganization uh, achieve full potential, you will see us enter that election with a lot of energy and verve.